I need to sharpen some hand saws. An ability that I consider to be an absolute game changer, but that is another discussion for another day. The fact remains I've got three different saws that I need to sharpen, and before I can sharpen them, I need to build a saw sharpening vise. Now, I don't really need to build a saw sharpening vise, but given the fact that I have enough saws to do, um, and we'll be doing them repeatedly, it's going to be handy to have. Now right off the bat you may be wondering just exactly what is a saw vise and why in the heck do I need one? What's the difference between a saw vise and a vise vise? Okay, well, let's just say if I was to chuck my saw up in this vise and I was to hit it with my file, as I go across it, it's going to chatter because there's enough distance right here that it would allow that saw to wiggle especially once you get out here further you've got no support so what a saw vise does is it's going to come on both sides of this throughout the length of the saw blade and it's going to hold it absolutely stiff right up here near the teeth so that there's no chatter when the file goes across the teeth it makes for a good smooth solid cut now optimally i would build this saw vise out of one by material maybe a one by four or so um, because a pair of two by fours is just way too much material it's just unnecessary it supports the heck out of your saw but four inches worth of uh, worth of wood being held in your vise is too much um, so instead of a one by what I happen to have is a scrap two by here so I will go ahead and rip this down the center and play that game called use what you have well I seem to have neglected to check the settings on my bandsaw and so I have a board that wasn't split quite properly because my blade was a little off kilter so Fortunately, the mating surface that will hold the saw is the still perfectly flat surface on the inside. Alright, now that I've got that ugly bandsaw work somewhat cleaned up, it's time to cut this guy down to length. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my longest saw, saw that's got the longest plate, and I'm going to make sure that this will accommodate that. I'm going to leave a little bit of overhang on each end, just for grins. And then I'm going to chop it off to that length. Okay, my next move here is to take the saw that I have with the smallest heel, so whatever the smallest 
uh, distance is here, I'm going to cut the saw vise so that it will accommodate that, so that it will pinch up here, but it will not interfere with the handle of the saw. Okay, I'll go ahead and cut this out with the coping saw, if for no other reason than this is my newest tool in my quiver, and I think that it's cool. Pretty neat little saw I found at a second-hand shop. The more I cut with the coping saw, the more obvious it was to me that I was set up completely wrong. There we go. That's much better. The cool thing about this coping saw is once you get to the point where you can't turn any sharper, just loosen it up a little bit and turn the blade however many degrees that you need. At least that's the way it's supposed to work. This one's not been used for some time, so it's a little sticky. Perfect. Sufficient though. There, now you can kind of see what the purpose was with that whole cutout business. So that the handle fits in there and that you can still support the blade all the way out to the end. Okay, the last thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take note of where either end of my largest saw is. I'm going to kind of mark that because I'd like to put a pin in each corner of this so that it's always aligned. I've drawn out the profile of my big saw here and back edge of it here and from there I've determined where the location for both of my pins will be right there and right there I'm going to go ahead and drill this with a smaller bit first just because in one of the locations on the other end it's a pretty critical clearance like I don't have a lot of room to work with so I need to make sure that my drill bit doesn't wander Alright, using my handy dandy drill gauge here, I've determined that since this is the pin that's going to be going into that, that it needs to be, the hole needs to be 5 sixteenths. A little bit snug. And that will allow it to stick in there, especially when some glue is applied. Since I want the peg to be stationary in one hole and I want it to slide in the other hole, I want it to be able to move in and out a little bit. And I don't have a drill bit that is just a fraction of one hair larger. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with the old file and enlarge that hole a little bit. Suddenly I find myself wishing that I had measured a little bit differently before drilling or before cutting out this deal here. This is awfully close. It's 
seems as though I've got just the clearance that I want. So now I can set the glue in the other one. And we'll be almost done with this. It's time for the glue. that glue out of the way because we don't want it to glue itself to the other half that would pretty well invalidate all the work here And just so that we know that it's aligned as it dries, get the other half on it. It's a little bit of space in there so that it doesn't glue itself together. And we'll let it set up. Okay, here's the final product, and here is the gist of how it works. So you take your saw, you slide it into the slot, you bring it until the teeth are just barely over the top. You can hold it with one hand because it is pinned and will remain in place. Throw it in the vise. Try not to pinch your fingers in it, and you tighten it down. Now you have your teeth just a bit above and supported. Now there is a bit of clamping that is involved in order to keep it really firm and secure. You want to clamp it on the ends, or if you have a couple of vices or something to that effect. But we're going to clamp it on the ends here. And now, when you apply the file to it, it cuts nice and smooth and even, rather than wiggling and chattering. That, my friends, is how to build it. And on the next video, I'll show you how to use it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.